Greetings, movie fans! Michael here, filming from my new house and new studio, which is still a work in progress, as you can probably tell by the fact that I literally have no background whatsoever. But over the next few weeks, things will get more fleshed out. Thanks for bearing with me. This new studio construction process is also the reason that my new analysis for the most recent chunk of Sword and Shield information is happening like 10 days after the Nintendo Direct first aired, so... My bad for that, but I promise this video will still be full of spicy new info, including some information that you might have missed. Three total trailers premiered on the day of the Direct. The trailer within the Direct itself, the English language trailer afterward, and the Japanese language trailer afterward. We'll analyze each of those progressing in that order that I just said. The very first shot from this trailer already shows a potential new Pokemon. These guys over here on the dock. They seem to have disc-like heads with spiky hair, kind of like Water Blight Ganon's tiny cousins. The one on the left clearly has arms, so to me that means these are definitely Pokemon and not just weird trees. Although, to be fair, it is definitely possible to be simultaneously a Pokemon and a weird tree. However, during this panning shot of the scenery, the creatures are completely stationary. They don't move a muscle. That could mean that they are statues, not actual Pokemon, but it could also mean that they just weren't fully animated for the trailer. I'm personally leaning more towards them being statues because they're completely gray in color. Also, if they are statues, that to me implies that they could be new legendary Pokemon. If you see a statue of a Pokemon in a populated area, it is oftentimes a legendary Pokemon, especially if the statue is big. And these things are really big. Just look how tall they are compared to the benches next to them. These things are two to three times as tall as a person. They're huge. This next shot of Maractus selling fruit doesn't really reveal anything other than the fact that little containers designed like clay doll exist. The following shot reveals that there are Galar inhabitants who suck at positioning snowman eyes. This shot shows that there are some castle ruins, which is pretty cool, and then there are several shots that don't reveal anything until this dope looking castle entrance, which speaking of, definitely seems like it could be modeled after a totally new Dragon-type Pokemon, definitely. Maybe. To be fair, there have been many examples of non-Pokemon Dragons being represented in the Pokemon world, one very prominent example being the Opelucid City Gym. However, what makes this Castle Dragon unique is its large rhinoceros horn. Most Dragon depictions don't have a big horn like that, and there certainly aren't any currently existing Dragon-type Pokemon with big rhinoceros horns, so to me, that could be a new Pokemon, because the creature that looks the closest to this is Greymon. There were a couple shots with no new info, but then they started to list off new features that they would be focusing on. The first was character customization. We knew this was going to be a feature a long time ago because we saw different outfits and hairstyles for the protagonists, but this segment went into further detail revealing that these games will have the most advanced options for character customization of any Pokemon game so far, adding the option to customize outerwear, gloves, and makeup, plus sporting a much larger pool of options for hairstyle and color. Also, apparently you can get outfits modeled after the gym leader's outfits, as this one is clearly Nessa's, and I must say, the idea of this poor girl walking through the winter routes in nothing but a sports bra and short shorts is pretty funny. Next, they showed off Pokemon Camp, a feature that we knew about due to the leak mentioning it, and quick clips from previous trailers confirming it. This trailer went into much further detail, though, showing that Pokemon Camp is the latest version of Ami and Refresh, allowing you to interact with your Pokemon to boost their affection, which grants battle bonuses. However, it is clearly much more involved, though. As you can see, Pokemon Camp will display more than one Pokemon at once, your entire party, in fact allowing you to play with multiple at a time and see them all run around and interact with each other. You are also able to go visit other players' camps in the wild area, and one of your Pokémon can be brought there to interact with theirs. They said that they definitely recommend doing this, which leads me to believe that by going to other players' camps, you can get, like, extra special items or affection boosts or something. During the camping showcase, they also sneakily revealed that Alcremie comes in a large variety of flavors. When I first saw this green one, for a bit I thought that they had just revealed Shiny Alcremie out of nowhere. 
Nope, like many ore, Alcremie can simply be found in a large variety of colors. As of writing and filming this video, 28 different variations have been shown, but more could definitely be revealed. There are two reasons that I believe that we will end up seeing more Alcremi variations. The first is that all the current forms seem to be simple combinations of body color and toppers. As this chart shows, there are several combinations out there that have not been revealed, but very easily could exist because it's a simple mix and match process. The second reason are the stars on Gigantamax Alcremi's body. All of the head toppers that we've seen so far show up at least once on Gigantamax All Creamy. However, the whole bottom layer of it is covered in stars, a head topper that we haven't seen yet. Therefore, that means we could get star head toppers revealed sometime in the future. If star toppers are revealed and all toppers can be mixed with all body flavors, that means that there would be 48 different All Creamy variations. Six different toppers times eight different body flavors. That is awesome. A couple months ago, I made a video going over 10 new Pokemon concepts that I wanted to see in Sword and Shield. And one of them was a Pokemon with a randomly generated color scheme. In other words, let's say there's a Pokemon that can be found in 10 different body colors and 10 different spot colors that are randomly decided when it shows up, leading to a hundred different possible colorations. Now, while 48 isn't as many as 100, it's still a lot, and I think that's really, really cool because it means any all creamy you find is going to be different from someone else's. The next feature they went over was cooking curry on rice. It's basically a lot like Poffin making back in Generation 4. You pick certain ingredients, which determines the type of curry, then you do a bit of a cooking minigame, which determines the quality of the curry. Cooking a new kind registers it in your curry decks, and you can do this with up to four players total. They do not ever specifically state what benefits your Pokemon receive by consuming curry, but due to this screenshot of them having musical notes over their head when they eat it, that leads me to believe that it'll just be the new boosting affection food, like Poke Puffs in Gen 6 or Poke Beans in Gen 7. I do feel a bit conflicted about this, because the process of cooking curry and trying to make all the different kinds seems like it could be fun, but also seems like it could get a bit tiresome, especially if the only way to get food to feed to your Pokemon to boost their affection is to make it yourself. And finally, the Direct trailer revealed two brand new species of Pokemon. The first one was Poltegeist, and might I say, they are killing it with new Pokemon names in Generation 8. First Roly Coley and Poltegeist, 10 out of 10, brilliant. Poltegeist is a pure ghost type and is known as the Black Tea Pokemon. It is 8 inches tall, weighs 0.9 pounds, and has the ability Weak Armor. Its body is actually made from tea, which I find really strange, because to me, if you're made of tea, you should be a water grass type, because in the wise words of Zuko, tea is just hot leaf juice. Its tea has a very distinct aroma and flavor, and if it really trusts the trainer, it will allow them to taste it. However, drinking too much can upset your tummy, which is really weird. I didn't know tea could upset your tummy, and if it can't, either it's demon tea or it's secretly alcoholic. Many Poltegeists make their homes inside of hotel and restaurant tableware and are often viewed as pests. Also, a very interesting tidbit from the official site is that Poltegeist can pour their power into leftover tea and create even more of their kind. So that's an interesting fact about Poltegeist reproduction that I was not expecting to learn today. Then they revealed another brand new Pokemon, Cramorant. Its name comes from Cram and Cormorant. I share this because I only learned that a Cormorant is a type of seabird due to this Pokemon's reveal, so thanks Pokemon for helping me learn zoology. Cramorant is a flying water type and is the Gulp Pokemon. It is 2 foot 7 inches tall, 39.7 pounds, and has the brand new ability Gulp Missile. How Gulp Missile works is that if Cramorant uses the move Surf or Dive, afterward it will come back up with a fish stuck in its mouth. If it is hit while that fish is there, it will spit the fish out at the enemy like a missile, doing damage. 
Speaking of that fish, artwork from the official site shows this fish clearly, and it does not look like some generic fish. This looks like a brand new species of Pokemon, which means that this relatively short trailer potentially revealed three or four, if the two dot guys are different guys, new species of Pokemon secretly. That is wild. Anyways, let's cover the last bits of information about Cramorant. It has an incredibly powerful appetite and will try to swallow anything it can fit in its mouth, spitting anything that is not food out like a missile when it realizes its mistake. Cramorant can be forgetful, but it never forgets a strong bond with its trainer. However, no matter how strong the bond, Cramorant will viciously attack literally anyone that tries to steal its food. So it's like most people. By the way, Cramorant was mentioned in the big leak. They called it a pelican, and they said it spits out Pikachu, but their description of it is definitely close enough to what Cramorant actually is, so further proves it. As for my personal opinions about the brand new Pokemon, I'm pretty neutral to them. I definitely do not dislike them, but I don't think either of them are as cute or as cool as I tend to like, so they're not gonna be one of my all-time favorites, at least as of now. Maybe one of them will end up being weirdly super strong and I love kicking butt with it. We'll see. That almost covers all the new info from the direct trailer, but at the very end there was this one shot here, which is actually a new feature covered more extensively in the other trailers and on the official site, that being League cards. They are very customizable, kind of like trading cards that you design specifically for yourself using a variety of graphics, poses, and facial expressions. They are displayed whenever you do a link battle, and it seems like you obtain the League cards of other players whenever you interact with them. It seems like just kind of a fun extra thing to customize in addition to your outfit. What's interesting to note though is the number of stars in the bottom right corner of a League card. There's no current information as to what these stars mean or how you gain more, but my theory is that they behave like stars on a trainer card. You complete more accomplishments within the game, and as you do, you get more stars added. League cards were the only things in the English trailer that were not shown in the direct trailer, but there was one more feature that was only shown in the Japanese trailer and on the official site, that being surprise trades. Surprise trades are basically the same as wonder trades. You pick a Pokemon to trade and randomly get one back. However, there are some improvements on it over previous versions of wonder trade. For one, you can keep progressing through the game while you wait for the trade to go through. It'll just display in the corner, and when it happens, it will show you. So, that's nice. Another interesting change from Wonder Trades is that surprise trades can occur via local wireless. So, imagine you're sitting in an airport and decide to do a surprise trade at the same time as someone else on the other side of the room. You guys could end up trading with each other. While this is cool, I don't really see how it would be relevant, because the chances of you being near someone else random doing it at the same time seems kind of low. Also, you could run into an issue if surprise trades prioritize local trading, because if you're trying to do some surprise trades at the same time as a friend sitting next to you, you would end up just trading with each other if you didn't, like, properly time it. And that seems like it could be a bit annoying. So that covers everything for this brand new Sword and Shield trailer analysis. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it and want to see some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend this video here. Also, I'm sorry I don't have a pack attack for this video, because I cannot find hidden fates anywhere! Alright, that's all I have for now, so till next time, Pikachu fans! Gotta catch them all!